Hello and welcome to lesson 13 on software design and development for National 5 Computing Science. Last time we learned about the length predefined function. Today we're going to look at round. Let's go to replet. Last time we got the length function to figure out the length of something. In this case it was a word. We can use other functions to do other things. Let's create a new replet and let's call it the round function. Now, as I mentioned in the last lesson, functions take in what's called a parameter. The length function takes in one parameter, which is a string, or it could be an array, it could be a number of things, but in our example, we entered a string. Or sometimes it was a variable that contained a string. The print function can take a parameter, but it can also take multiple parameters. Now, you don't need to know about this, but the print function can take in multiple parameters, and look what this one does. It just stops it ending with a new line. Now, you don't need to know too much about that. The range function for x in range can take multiple parameters. It can either take a single parameter, meaning one number, and when we run it, it works. It can take in two numbers. These are two parameters, so this is the start and the end point. Or it can take in three parameters, where we have the start, the end, and the number of steps it takes. The length function only takes in one parameter, but the function we're going to be using today is called round. Now the round function can take in two parameters, but the second one is optional. Let me show you how you would use it. So let's say we have a number, and this number is going to store a decimal. Look at that. This is a beautiful number, my favourite number. What we can do is we can round the number, round number equals, use the round function, and as I said, we can give it two parameters, but the second one is optional. So let's give it one parameter. We'll give it this number. And let's see what happens. Let's just print the round number. When we run this, what do you think is going to happen? What is it going to print? It's printing the round number, which is the, the result of the round function when given the number. Let's see what happens. 5, 3, 4. So it's taken this number and it has rounded it down. Why is it rounded it down? Because this is less than 5, so if we make that 0.6, blah, 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 it should round it up. Hey, pretty good, right? Pretty good. So if you only include a single parameter, a single number, it will round it to the nearest whole number. This is a very useful feature, but I mentioned it can take two parameters. What do you think the second parameter is? So to do multiple parameters, you add a comma, and then you type in your next parameter. The second parameter is for how many decimal places. So if I want one decimal place, I type the number one. What's it going to round it to now? Let's run and see. There we are, 53.46. Again, the 0.63 has been rounded down to just 0.6 because this one is less than five. Let's make it a bit higher. Whoops, 0.69. It will now round that one up to 0.7. There we are. So this is rounding. It's just mathematical rounding. If we do it to five decimal places, how many decimal places do you think you'll see? Five, obviously. So this is, I mean, that's basically it. When would you use this? Well, any time that you need to round a number. One of the most common times is, let's say you've got a currency. Now, in previous examples, we've been calculating the prices of things and taking off discounts. And this has left us with like half pennies and things like that, which obviously you can't give someone change of a half penny. So we need to round it. Let's just calculate the total cost of something. We'll do this three... For three products, and I'm going to show you a small trick here, we're going to say the total equals the total plus the float value of an input. So we don't need to memorize what the user inputs and then add it, we can just add it directly. Now there are benefits and drawbacks to this, I wouldn't recommend it. Enter the cost of an item, I'm not going to bother with um, making sure my messages are very nice and stuff. It's just an example. And then at the end, I'm going to say the total equals the total times 0 0.95. We're taking off 5%. We're giving the user some discount. Now, if we print the total, what's it going to do? Let's run it, see what happens. Let's type in £9.75, £4.50, and we've got £10.20. Now look at this, we've got decimal numbers that are way too long. We cannot give someone change of 22.75 pence, that doesn't make any sense. So what we need to do is round this to two decimal places. There are a number of ways we can do that. Oh, the other, the other problem is it doesn't have a pound sign at the start, so let's do that. So we add the pound sign, and when we join the total, remember the pound sign is a string, but the total is a number, so we need to convert this total to a string. 
And remember to add the bracket at the end. So we could round this in a multitude of ways. One way is we could create a new variable called round total and just make it equal to the result of the round function on the total. And we need to put the round total in the message instead. All right, let's try this. £9.70, 5.25, and we've got 4.50. 18 pounds. What's the problem here? We rounded it to the nearest whole number. We need two decimal places. This is why you test your programs. So let's try again. 4.50, 9.75, and we've got 450 again, who cares? There we are, it is rounded. If it wasn't rounded, there is potential that it could have had many more decimal places after this. So this is creating a new variable and performing the round function on a separate line. This takes up, in my mind, a bit too much space. It's taken up more space in memory by creating a new variable. Remember, that's just a memory location that the computer saves for storing numbers and, and text and things. And we're performing an action here that we could have performed in line up here. So let's do it in line here instead. So let's just round the total times 0.95 and after comma, two decimal places, close the bracket. And because we've gotten rid of that round total variable, we'll replace it again. So this is a little bit better. Let's type in some prices and it's rounding it beautifully. But here's the thing. Sometimes it's not very good practice to round numbers in the program in the, in the working of the program, it's not always a good practice because let's say you've got loads and loads and loads of numbers and you're rounding them before displaying them, but then you want to add up those numbers. Well, you're chopping off certain small amounts. And if you're doing this millions of times, as would happen in financial software, obviously in a school program, it's not a big deal. But if you're doing this in the code, if you're storing the rounded version and adding that to important numbers, it might put off the, the accuracy of your total. So what is a better idea would be instead of rounding it when you are storing the total, round it when you're displaying the total. So the number is always accurate stored in the program. It's only when you display it that you're chopping off those extra decimals. Now remember to keep track of how many brackets you've got here. I've got one open, two open and three open. So that means I need three close. Let's run it. This is the final time we're running this. And then 90 pounds. There we are. It works beautifully. So this is the round function. It can take one parameter if you want to round it to the nearest whole number, or you can round it to any number of decimals. If you were to say zero decimal places, it will actually round it to the nearest whole number, but will still display some decimal places. Let me show you. See how it's rounded to a whole number, but it still includes a decimal place. If you don't want the decimal place, don't include that second parameter and it will chop it off. So that's the round function. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Have a play about with it. Give it a try. Practice, 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 and I'll see you in the next one.